From literally flying yourself, to gliding across the entire map, here are facts about every single ability in PvZ Garden Warfare 2. Did you know that EM Peach is most effective to mechs, as it stuns them for a whopping 6 seconds? This is the longest stun, since EM Peach stuns every other zombie for only 3.5 seconds. Here's a bonus fact, an interesting thing in PvZ GW2, is that Mech Gargantuar does not get affected by EM Peach in any way whatsoever. This is interesting, because in Plants vs Zombies 2, Mech Gargantuar is deactivated when an EM Peach is used in his radius. If you hold down both the Citron Ball ability and the Shoot button as Citron, this strange glitch will occur where you can shoot while in ball form. This glitch works with all of the Citrons, but is best with Armor Citron as he shoots a powerful bullet with each shot. I'm going to class this next fact for both abilities, the Citron Ball ability and the Hyper Ball ability. Did you know that if you use the Citron Ball ability and activate the Hyper Ball ability, then jump and exit the Citron Ball at the same time, you can bunny hop? After you do this, all you have to do is jump every time you hit the ground. This isn't that easy to do and requires some practice, so don't get discouraged if you don't do it the first few tries. This can be used to back away from enemies and attack them whilst doing so. When on a ledge of some sort and you use the Spin Dash ability as Citron, you will go extremely fast compared to if you use it on flat ground. This works especially well on the map Moonbase Z on the first zone, as you can get to the capture point within seconds, sometimes even before the zombies. An additional fact about Spin Dash is that you can cancel it. In order to do this, you have to first of all go into ball form, then use the spin dash ability. As soon as you do this, you have to quickly exit ball mode. This glitch isn't that useful, it is just a cool thing to show off to your friends. One peculiar fact about Peel Shield, is that it lasts for 30 whole seconds whereas the Mood Shield lasts for only 8 seconds, that is almost quadruple more than the Mood Shield. This is most likely due to Peel Shield being so weak with only 75 HP, so therefore a longer duration is needed. According to Plants vs Zombies wiki, Mood Shield is based on the Mood Ring, which is a ring that changes color based on the wearer's mood. Did you know that there used to be a different design as to how Time Snare used to look like? This can be found in the PVZ GW2 Moon Base Z trailer featuring Rose, Colonel Corn, and Citron. This trailer for Garden Warfare was out before the game was released so therefore it was never in the game. As you can see, Time Snare used to make a bubble that slowed enemies down who were caught inside, whereas today it makes a spirally line that covers what looks to be the exact same area as the old Time Snare, but lasts for a shorter amount of time. A bonus fact for Time Snare is that did you know that there is only one boss that it doesn't work on. This is a quite random boss but it is Giga Gargantua. I tested Time Snare on every other boss but Giga Gargantua was the only boss that it didn't work on, Time Snare even worked on normal Gargantua. 
An interesting fact about Arcane Enigma is that it cancels Party Rose's legendary mode if it is active. This is most likely because at the cost of surviving it takes away your party mode. This also occurs whilst using Ark and Lotus. Did you know that Arcane Lotus only cancels the freeze slash chill effect and cannot remove the toxic and fire damage effect? Even though Rose isn't taking damage, the fire and toxic damage effect is still on the Rose, so if it were to exit Arcane Lotus it would start to take damage. Furthermore I found out something very interesting, if a toxic brain shoots you and you are in Arcane Lotus, you will get the toxic damage effect but, if the toxic brains is punching you and near you, the toxic effect will not apply to you. This is one of the oddest things I have found in PVZGW2 so far and I have no idea as to why this happens. Did you know that Godify can be used to take away zombies in vulnerability? The only time you would need to do this, is when you are playing a zombie mission as plants which is only possible through using a certain glitch, if you don't know it check it out. Taking away the zombies in vulnerability allows you to kill them which can result in some pretty funny stuff as you aren't normally meant to be able to do this. One bonus fact for Godify is that you can surprisingly stay as a goat if you have been Godified. To do this, you have to press options every few seconds when you have been Godified, to reset the timer. This can be used to troll people in online matches or just to stay as a goat if you really like being a goat. Did you know that Psychedelic Goat has no effect on eyes? Even though I used the Psychedelic Goat, the AI has no problem looking around and locks onto me with ease. If you didn't know, Psychedelic Goat makes the player that it is used on, look around in random directions and makes their screen turn disoriented and puts a weird effect on their screen. Psychedelic Goat has the same effect on AI as the normal Goat, so I would not suggest using it in ops or even buying it, since it isn't that good anyway. Did you know that Butter Barrage actually summons Butter Hawks which then drop the butter onto the ground? You can see this if you look up right after you use the Butter Barrage ability. But to see the Butter Hawks up close, you have to go in the map Great White North on the 5th capture point, then you have to throw your Butter Barrage ability so that it goes in here, after that, you have to quickly go up here. Once you have made it, you can see them up close but cannot interact with them in any way, as they are not solid but instead invisible. The two Butter Hawks that are summoned from the Butter Barrage ability, look to be a smaller version of the one in Colonel Korn's base. This Butter Hawk can be ridden and interestingly does not shoot butter, but instead explosive and fast shooting kernels. One bonus fact about Butter Barrage, is that the thing that Colonel Corn throws is a plant from Plants vs Zombies too. You can tell, because while looking at both of them closely you can see that they have the same features, also they both make the same smoke effect.
A surprising fact about Husk Hop, is that it deals the highest damage out of every ability in PvZ GW2 by far, as it can do a whopping 750 damage if all of its bullets land. I've never successfully landed all of Husk Hop's bullets, but as you can see, each bullet does 15 damage and Husk Hop has 50 bullets, so 50 times 15 is 750. That is 3 times a ZPG's damage. Another cool fact about Husk Hop, is that did you know that you can bunny hop by using it? All you have to do is use the Husk Hop ability and as soon as you hit the ground, you have to jump and repeat this. With a few tries, you should be able to do this with ease. The ability Shuck Shot, may be a reference to Cobb Cannon from Plants vs Zombies 1, I think this, since Shuck Shot shares some similarities with Cobb Cannon. One similarity, is that they both shoot a powerful cob of corn, that explodes and does a huge amount of damage. One peculiar fact about multi shuck shot, is that if you use the multi shuck shot ability, then quickly enter any cannon, this strange animation will occur, to remove it you have to press shoot. This glitch is quite odd, and I discovered it whilst playing around in the backyard. Did you know, that Chili Bean Bomb is in Plants vs Zombies 2? In this game, instead of being called Chili Bean Bomb it is just called Chili Bean. This is because in Plants vs Zombies 2, Chili Bean has a unique and different ability to it in PvZ GW1 and 2. In this game it kills any zombies who eat it, first by making them fart which stuns any other zombies behind it, and then they die. Did you know, that in 2017 there was a huge debate as to whether Dark Bean Bomb or Bling Maiden should be added to the game? This was because PVZ posted this picture on Twitter and asked people to vote for whichever ability that they wanted to come to Rux next and the ability that got the most votes would appear in Rux's shop. The ability that got most votes ended up being the Dark Bean Bomb as a lot of people thought that Bling Maiden was boring as it was just a Bling Walnut. Why are you fooling me? Have you ever wondered what Sombrero Bean Bomb says when he is deployed? Well you might think that he just makes random noises like the other Bean Bombs, but instead he speaks Mexican Spanish and says, Andale, when deployed, and before it explodes, it says, Arriba. These words translate to, come on, and, get up, respectively. A bonus detail, is that if you look closely, you can actually see the Sombrero Bean Bomb's lips moving when he speaks. This is very cool to me, and it just shows the level of detail that they put into Garden Warfare 2. A cool fact for P. Gatling, is that the helmet that P. Shooter wears actually comes from inside his mouth. If you look closely, when I use the Pea Gatling ability, the Pea Shooter spits out the helmet, and consumes it, when I exit the ability. This is odd, as I'm not sure how Pea Shooter would be able to fit the whole helmet inside his mouth. Another interesting thing that I found out about Pea Gatling, is that when you die while in Pea Gatling, the Pea Gatling hat will still stay on the Pea Shooter. This is just a cool little thing that I found and I'm not sure if the game developers intentionally added this. An odd fact about Retro Gatling, is that if you look at its description, it says that the pea shooter manually cranks out the peas that it shoots, but when the Retro Gatling ability is used and you look at the crank, you can see that the pea shooter is not turning the crank, 
and that the crank doesn't even move while the ability is active. This is strange and the game developers shouldn't have wrote this and just left it out of the description. Unfortunately, I could not find any really cool or interesting facts about Bling Gatling as it is just a reskin of the normal ability Retro Gatling and doesn't do anything differently. But one thing that I found out about Bling Gatling is that it looks surprisingly a lot like a bigger version of the Pizzazzling Potato Mine. Have a look for yourself. Bling Gatling has gems around the bottom of its hat and a bigger gem on the top just like Pizzazzling Potato Mine, this makes them look so similar. Did you know, that with the help of Hyper and the Bean Bomb ability, you can double jump? In order to preform this, first you have to activate the Hyper ability, after you do that, you have to jump and deploy your Bean Bomb, once you have done this, you have to quickly press jump. Double jumping, can allow you to jump higher and get to places faster, which is key for a plant like Pea Shooter. One fact about Super Pea Jump, is that it makes Pea Shooter jump the same amount as a normal Super Brains. This fact is kinda useless, but it is just a cool thing to know as there was not really any facts about Super Pea Jump that I could find. Another interesting fact about Super Pea Jump, is that if you listen closely, you can hear that it sounds much like Mr. Krabs from Spongebob Walking, take a listen and tell me what you guys think. A surprising fact about the Goop ability, is that did you know, that Goop can apply to Mecha Cat, which is the character that you play as in Infinity Time on Zombies. When I found this out, I was very surprised as I did not expect a tiny chomper to be able to Goop the entirety of a giant mech. A bonus fact for Goop, is that in 2017 there used to be a glitch showcased by BobBox999, where you could shoot through walls with goop. This glitch still works to this day. A cool fact about super sticky goop, is that if you look at the ability closely, you can see that the boot slash foot in the picture, is actually foot soldier's foot. I guess Chomper really likes to eat foot soldiers. Despite Super Sticky Goop's description saying that the goop is so sticky that zombies can't even move when they are caught in it, while an engineer is on a jackhammer, they can move a tiny bit, to see it you have to look very closely. I know this isn't a game-breaking mistake, but it's just a nice thing to know. One fact about Chomp Cannon that I bet you didn't know, is that it can knock back your teammates or enemies, however, it is really glitchy and sometimes it can somehow, move your teammates forwards. I know that it might look like I was moving myself but I can assure you that I wasn't, if you still don't believe me you can try it out for yourself. A bonus fact for Chomp Cannon, is that the animation that Chomper does when you use the Chomp Cannon ability, is the same as Chomper zooming in, in Battle for Neighborville. Did you know that there is only one set of walls that Chomper can burrow under? The walls can be located in the sewers, at the shooting range. Going under these walls, can allow the player to cheat a speedrun, as long as you have someone to press start once you are inside. Another fact for Burrow, is that if someone is Godified and they get burrowed by a chomper, if the Godify ends during the animation, it can actually save you from the burrow. Someone in the comments called SickFox9902 actually told me this, so shout out to them.
A strange fact for Speedboro is that did you know that you only have one chance to eat a zombie and if you misclick, you will not be able to eat any zombie for the rest of the ability. I found this out because I found that when I was using the Speedboro ability, it was really hard for me to eat anyone. Tell me in the comments if any of you guys noticed that or if I am the only one. Anyways, I think that this just makes the normal burrow ability better, as you can just spam eat rather than having to press it right with only one chance. Did you know that you can make your spike weed float? In order to do this, you have to find any breakable object such as this box. After that, you have to go on top of your object and place your spike weed down. Now all you have to do is break the object. Strangely, the spike weed has an invisible barrier underneath it which means that you can't hide under it. But what you can do is go on the top of it and float. If instead a zombie goes near the floating spike weed, then this strange thing will happen. As you can see, the spike weed picked the super brains up and put him on himself. This to me is really cool, and I am really surprised that the spike weed can actually get the super brains from down below. Another demonstration of spike weed's power is that if you use the warp or heroic kick ability past the spike weed, it will pull you back eventually to itself. I think this is really cool and shows the sheer strength of the spike weed. However, the spike weed is surprisingly not able to pull back an all-star, once he has used the sprint tackle ability. I'm not sure if it's because the sprint tackle is too fast or too strong, but it is cool nonetheless. Also, when the all-star uses the sprint tackle ability past the spike weed, it is triggered. Take a look. An interesting fact about spiky spikeweed, is that it looks and behaves surprisingly a lot like the plant tangle kelp, from Plants vs Zombies 1. They have the same red eyes and spiky vines, also, they both grab zombies into them. I did a glitch that made me immune to dying in water so I could see if you could actually plant the spiky spikeweed in the water, to compare if it is really like Tangle Kelp from Plants vs Zombies 1. When I placed the spiky spikeweed in the water however, it kept instantly getting destroyed, I guess they are not so similar. Did you know, that vampweed actually makes hissing noises? Take a listen for yourself. If you don't believe me, every time I went away from the vampweed, I stopped hearing the hissing noise but when I went near the vampweed, I heard the noise. If you would like to have more vampweeds or spikeweeds in general, a built-in feature in PVZ GW2 is that every time you swallow a zombie you will gain one spikeweed. However, this does not work if you swallow an object like a newspaper or screen door shield. One fact for Twilight Warp, is that it can allow you to warp past an Imps's gravity grenade, take a look. Furthermore, if you use Twilight Warp as soon as you are about to be gravity grenaded, you will escape. This is the only ability that I'm aware of, that allows you to be able to do this. One peculiar fact about Heal Beam, is that did you know that you can speed the healing rate in which you heal your allies up? In order to preform this, you have to hold down can your back button, on controller its circle and then you are going to want to keep pressing the heal beam ability. 
The rate that you heal depends on how fast you can press the ability. The faster you can press the ability, the faster you can heal. A bonus fact for Heal Beam is that in 2015, Heal Beam was the most used ability. This is most likely because at the time most people used Sunflower, as it was the starting character, and back then people didn't have many characters to choose from. One strange fact about Rainbow Heal Beam, is that if you go to the screen where you equip your abilities and then look at Rainbow Heal Beam, you can see that whenever you go back the picture of the ability changes. Have a look closely and see if you can spot it for yourself. The picture that the ability changes into, is actually the Rainbow Heal Beam's picture from PVZGW1 and I'm not sure why the picture even changes in the first place. An odd fact for Sunbeam, is that despite its ability's picture showing that Sunflower unloads the powerful beam of sun through her eyes, in the actual game you can see that the Sunbeam is actually shot out through Sunflower's mouth. One interesting fact for Solar Flare Beam, is that the ability may have been inspired by the Death Star from Star Wars. You can tell as they both shoot a green beam in the same way, have a look for yourself. A very strange fact for Heal Flower, is that when you shoot it from up close, your bullets seem to disappear. I have a theory as to why this is, if this was even intentionally added into the game which there is a low chance of. My theory, is that the Heal Flower absorbs Sunflower's shots as it is just pure sun, which is exactly what powers up the Heal Flower as it is Heal Flower's nutrients. When shooting any other object, this however does not happen. A cool fact about Vampire Flower, is that in any quest where you are speaking to an enemy, if you place your Dark Flower down just before letting the cutscene play, the Dark Flower will start shooting the enemy giving you a sneaky little advantage. However the Dark Flower will not be able to completely kill the enemy as it only lasts for 30 seconds. A bonus fact for Vampire Flower, is that did you know that it has 25 more health than Heal and Rainbow Heal Flower? The Vampire Flower has 100 hit points whereas Heal Flower and Rainbow Heal Flower only have 75 hit points, which is equivalent to an imp's health. Despite Rainbow Heal Flower's description, which states that it is the exact same as the normal Heal Flower except that it is colorful, if you use Rainbow Heal Flower, you can tell that it is different to the normal Heal Flower as every second it produces one sun, whereas Heal Flower produces three sun, every three seconds. You might not think that this makes a huge difference, but trust me it does. Another compelling fact about Rainbow Heal Flower, is that its picture for the ability shows it to have green petals and a green stem, when however these parts of the flower in game are actually golden. Small facts like these, are not mind-blowing, but are just nice things to know, for all those people that like to look at this game in detail, like me. Did you know, that Potato Mine actually has a short delay of 1.5 seconds before it can be able to detonate? 
During this time, the potato mine is invincible. Watch how the zombies walk over it without making the potato mine explode. If you still don't believe me, look at the Captain Deadbeard. As you can see, the Captain Deadbeard was able to stand on the potato mine for 1.5 seconds and then it exploded. PVZGW2's game developers probably added potato mines delay, so that Cactus couldn't just walk up to zombies and get an insta-kill, just by placing the potato mine down. Since the cactus can carry three mines all together, cactus would just be able to go up to any mech, use the potato mine three times and completely demolish it. Now maybe you can see why the game developers added the delay. One fascinating fact about potato nugget mine, is that did you know that you can stack them? In order to do this, it is very easy, all you have to do is go on flat ground and just keep using your potato nugget mine. Make sure not to move or look around whilst placing the mines down. Weirdly, you can only stack up to three mines. You may be wondering as to what happens if a zombie steps into the stacked nugget mines, well take a look for yourself. As you can see, when the super brains stepped into the mines, all of them exploded. Since each nugget mine does 50 damage and since you can stack 3 of them, it technically makes the stacked mines into a normal potato mine. This is because the 3 mines do 150 damage altogether, which is as much as a normal potato mine. A cool fact for Pizzazzling Potato Mine, is that did you know that it was the first ability to ever come to Rux? I think that for the first ability sold by Rux, it is underwhelming. I think that they should have made a new ability that wasn't just a reskin of an already existing ability, to come to Rux first instead. A surprising fact about the Rainbow Warp ability, is that there used to be a glitch in the Town Hall, where if you equipped the Burrow or Speed Burrow ability instead of the Rainbow Warp ability, then you couldn't switch back to the Rainbow Warp ability for the rest of the Town Hall. Unfortunately, I don't have any evidence of this and couldn't find this happening to anyone, so you are just going to have to believe me. I remember being excited to use the Unicorn Chomper in the Town Hall, and when I was going to equip him, I switched his Rainbow Warp ability for Burrow to see if Unicorn Chomper was better with it. After that I played with Burrow and tried to switch back to the Rainbow Warp ability, and in my surprise, it sadly didn't work and I was stuck with the Cursed Burrow ability with Unicorn Chomper. Did you know that with the help of Garlic Drone, you can fly yourself? In order to do this, it is a bit tricky therefore takes some practice and getting used to. But to execute this, you are going to want to use your drone and push yourself into any corner like this bush. Then you are going to want to keep pushing your character until it lands perfectly on your drone like this. The final thing that you have to do, is go up with the drone and move slowly to wherever you would like to go, as your character could fall off of the drone. If you need a bit more help on preforming this, I made a whole video on it, so go check it out if you're stuck. Anyways, I think flying on the drone can be really fun if you want to take a break from try-harding PVZGW2 and I also think that it can actually be useful, as it can allow Cactus to get to places which are normally impossible to reach, giving you an advantage over everybody else. Once you learn how to fly yourself, it can be really fun in online matches, as people's reactions are really funny. With all that said, I will move on to the next fact. A bonus fact for Garlic Drone or any drone in general, is that if a drone makes contact with any mech, the drone instantly gets destroyed. I'm not sure as to why this happens, and only found this out recently. Tell me if you guys think that this was intentionally added into the game, or added by accident. Anyways, there's a cool and strange fact for you guys. Despite Artichoke's ability picture, showing that its propellers are green, 
if you use the actual ability, you can see that its propellers are not green, but a reddish color. I'm not sure why they did this, as in PVZ GW1 they did not make this mistake. One intriguing fact about Red Artichoke, is that if someone uses the Red Artichoke and then goes near you, you can see that it creates smoke every second or two, underneath it. This is strange and cool, as it's such a random but neat thing that the game developers added, as they completely didn't need to. This however, does not occur when using the normal Artichoke drone, so therefore is a unique feature to the Red Artichoke. A bonus fact for Red Artichoke, is that when looking at its picture for the ability, you can see that it presents Red Artichoke to have white teeth, whereas when using the ability, you can see that its teeth are actually red, to see it you have to look extremely closely. The game developers probably just forgot to make Red Artichoke's teeth white, as it is such a small thing and was not something on their need to-do list. But nonetheless, that's a little but interesting fact for you guys. One odd fact for Dark Garlic Drone, is that it is the only plant that can kill itself with its primary weapon. To do this, you have to go near any wall or floor and shoot, this damages the drone. I don't know why this drone can do this and find it really strange. It doesn't make a difference to Dark Garlic Drone, as its shots are easy to land, so therefore you would not need to go near enemies to land your shots, which means you will not hit yourself with your own shots by accident. It would have made more sense for the game developers to have added this to every other drone, so people couldn't just go close to people and shoot them, if that was what they were trying to prevent, as the other drone's bullets are 10 times harder to land. An unusual fact for Tall Nut Battlement, is that did you know that you can make it go sideways? In order to do this, you are going to want to go on top of any slanted or rounded object or land, and then you are going to want to place down the tall nut at a certain angle. Sometimes the tall nut will go sideways, but sometimes it won't so you just have to keep trying. Putting your tall nut battlement sideways, gives you the best defense out of all the walnuts, as no one can hit you or even see you when you are behind it. Just look at the amount of protection you get when using the tall nut normally and sideways. As you can see, the difference is immense, and you get way more protection when using it slanted, so therefore, if you main cactus, or just want to get good with him, I think that you should definitely learn how to do this. You may be saying, there aren't always going to be objects for me to place the tall nut battlement on, to do this trick, but I will show you how to make it go sideways almost anywhere. To make the tall nut battlement go sideways anywhere, you have to place either a potato or pizzazzling potato mine down, then you are going to want to place the tall nut as close to on the side of the potato mine as possible. Since the potato mine is round, it should make the tall nut go tilted, but keep in mind that this is quite hard to pull off, so you are going to have to keep practicing. One fact for Iron Maiden, is that did you know that it gets completely destroyed by Engineer's Jackhammer? In this clip, you will see that the Jackhammer rapidly drains away Iron Maiden's health within seconds. This is really cool to me, and I don't know if PVZGW2 added this intentionally, tell me what you guys think, in the comments. With that said, I'll move on to the next fact. A bonus fact for Iron Maiden, is that in its description it refers to Iron Maiden as being a tall nut. This is peculiar, as when looking at the Iron Maiden up close, you can clearly tell that it is built much like a walnut rather than a tall nut. Here is a picture of both wall and tall nut, so that you can compare the two. Additionally, Bling Maiden is also referred to as a tall nut. I guess PVZGW2 don't learn from their mistakes.
A cool fact about Bling Maiden, is that did you know that you can make an infinite staircase using it? Doing this is pretty simple. All you have to do is place a Bling Maiden down and then you have to stand on top of it. After that, you will need to place another Bling Maiden on the top of the already existing Bling Maiden. Then all you have to do, is repeat these two steps. One thing that I would like to say though, is that making the staircase can take a long amount of time since you have to wait for the Bling Maiden ability to be ready for each set of staircase you make, so I would suggest having YouTube or a game open while doing this. One abnormal fact for Blazon Blast, is that if you hit an enemy with it and then they die to the fire damage of Blazon Blast, then it will strangely say that you killed them with Flame Spray, which is Fire Chomper's primary weapon. Take a close look for yourself. I think that this is really odd, so can someone in the comments please explain this to me? Anyways, as you will be able to see, when I kill the enemy with the actual Blazon Blast and not the fire damage, only then will it say that I killed them with the Blazon Blast. I have my own explanation to this, I think that the fire damage that the Blazon Blast does, is the Fire Chomper's fire damage, hence why it says that I killed the enemy with Flame Spray, I could be completely wrong but that is my theory. Anyways, I wanna say a huge shout out to Imp53 for telling me this in the comments, it is very much appreciated. A weird fact for Smoldering Madness, is that if you enter any cannon and use the Smoldering Madness ability at the same time, this unusual glitch will occur, where Torchwood loses all of his flames at the top of his head. This looks really cursed, and it kind of feels like the Torchwood is bald without his flames, I definitely think that you should try this out, at least once, because it's really weird but cool at the same time. Additionally, if you would like to regain your flames, you just need to use the Smoldering Madness ability again, this will relight your flames and make them go back to normal. A fun fact for Leaf Shield, is that did you know that there was meant to be another ability that was meant to replace Leaf Shield? This ability was a dash but for the Torchwood. It was much like All Star's Sprint Tackle ability but did less damage so therefore had a shorter recharge of 15 seconds. I like the design of this ability and think that it would help Torchwood to get around the map faster, but I think that it would be too overpowered, as people would just be able to dash to a group of enemies and then use the Blazon Blast ability wiping almost everyone out. Also I think that it wouldn't fulfill Torchwood's purpose of being a tank, but that's just my opinion so tell me what you guys think. An interesting fact revolving around the ability Gravity Grenade, is that did you know that it had a different design than to the one it has now? Its old look, can actually be found in the very early beta footage of PVZ GW2. As you can see, the Gravity Grenade used to have a pinkish look and had a slightly larger hitbox. The fact that he game developers of Plants vs Zombies changed the color of Gravity Grenade from pink to the blue color that we have now, is a bit peculiar to me, as I think that it suited it a bit more. Anyways, that is just my opinion, so feel free to tell me yours in the comment section. With all that said, I'll move on to the next fact. One fascinating fact for Robocall, is that certain objects can be instantly destroyed just by the mech simply walking into them. These objects include, tall nut battlements, drones, spikeweeds and vehicles. I think that this is really cool, as I just found this out a few days ago, and it shows just how packed PVZ GW2 is with content. I have played this game since it came out, 
and I'm still finding out tons of new and compelling facts about it. A bonus fact for Z-Mech, is that you can eject from it mid-air. Doing this is pretty simple, all you have to do, is walk forward, jump and eject from the mech all at the same time. This looks really cool, as it looks like in the movies, where people escape at the last second or in mid-air. I know it looks like a really scuffed version of it, but it's really captivating nonetheless. Also another amazing thing that you can do with this, is get high ground and drop the mech on your enemies, as they will be really shocked and the explosion from the mech will blow them up before they even know it. It's like a giant chili bean bomb but for imp. A fact for missile madness, is that did you know that there is a way to get bonus time for the mech by using it. To perform this, you are just going to want to use the Missile Madness ability as soon as the Z mech is about to run out. Since the Missile Madness ability lasts for around 7 seconds, that is how much extra time you will get for the mech. I'm not quite sure as to why this would ever be useful, but there's a fun fact for you guys. One odd fact for explosive escape, is that using the fact about the Z-Mech that I said earlier, about jumping out of your mech mid-air, you can find out that explosive escape actually has a secret picture. I only managed to pull this off with low gravity but I'm not sure if you have to. Anyways, as you can see, the icon for the explosive escape ability changed into a completely different picture. This was probably meant to be the actual picture for the ability but was later scrapped and forgotten to be removed. This ability picture was actually later used in Battle for Neighborville so was not completely wasted. Here's a picture of them both. An extra fact for explosive escape is that the safety button sound of the cover falling actually plays when you warp home as imp. This is really strange to me, and I have no clue as to why this happens, listen closely. A great fact involving the Robo Stomp ability, is that if you would like to cancel the charge up of Robo Stomp with a jump, which will help you to avoid being shot, all you have to do, is jump and use the Robo Stomp ability at the same time. Doing this, will cancel most of the animation and allow you to move a short distance while doing it, and will therefore be more effective hitting enemies. Here is me using the Robo Stomp ability normally. As you can see, it charges up for a really long time and so you will most likely fail to hit enemies. One unusual fact about Impkata, is that despite Imp shooting the bullets that he uses during Impkata from his guns, when using any other Imp than the normal one, you can see that the bullets for Impkata still stay the same. Even though the Lil Drake shoots fire, when using the Impkata, he still shoots the boring old Imp blaster shots. I think that it would have been way cooler if Lil Drake shot a circle of fire bullets, but tell me what you guys think in the comments. Quick disclaimer that I would like to say, is that since there are so many mechs and abilities for them, I will make a video purely on them, as it might get repetitive. Anyways back to the video. A cool fact for Super Ultra Ball, is that it is a clear reference to the Hadouken Ball from Street Fighter. This makes sense, as Super Brains is meant to be super and so therefore takes inspiration from different superheroes. A bonus fact for Super Ultra Ball, is that you are surprisingly able to move whilst using it. In order to perform this, you are going to want to be Cosmic Brains and hold down the punch. After that, you are just going to want to use the Ultra Ball whilst still holding the punch down. 
Doing this will allow you to move a few centimeters. This is very useless, but it's just a nice thing to know. One interesting fact for Super Guided Ultra Ball is that did you know that it has a set time before it explodes? Well, if the Super Guided Ultra Ball doesn't hit anything for around 10 whole seconds, it will manually explode. I think that this shouldn't happen, as the Guided Ultra Ball moves so slowly so should have a bit more time to hit its targets, but tell me what you guys think. An additional fact including the Super Guided Ultra Ball ability, is that were you aware that you have the ability to zoom in whilst using it. This isn't really handy in any way, as the Super Guided Ultra Ball has homing anyways. But hey, I didn't say that these facts were going to be useful. A really surprising fact utilizing the Turbo Twister ability, is that did you know that it used to be so overpowered that PopCap had to nerf it significantly? Well, in around 2016, Turbo Twister did 8 damage per tick and slowed enemies down who were caught inside, also it lasted a bit longer. This made Turbo Twister way too overpowered, and so then it later got nerfed to the puny damage of only 2. Up to this day, Turbo Twister is only really used to tank damage and for another reason that I will get onto. Another way that Turbo Twister is used, is to extinguish the fire damage effect. Turbo Twister can only get rid of the fire damage effect and no other ones. This makes sense, as fire can be put out in real life by wind, but toxic and chillness can't, as wind will only make you colder if you are trying to get rid of your chillness. As you can see, Turbo Twister is unable to remove the toxic and ice effect. A fact featuring the heroic kick ability, is that did you know that the player used to only have one instead of two? This didn't really allow Super Brains to get around the map as quickly and as frequently as the game developers wanted, so the amount of heroic kicks was increased from 1 to 2. One interesting fact for Barrel Blast, is that the design of the ability may have been inspired or be a reference to Sly 2, Band of Thieves. You can tell, because the character Sly Cooper from Sly 2, could hop into a barrel of TNT as a disguise and sets the fuse to blow when necessary, similarly to how Captain Deadbeard uses the barrel to sneak in and lights the fuse at will. The only real difference between the two, is that Barrel Blast doesn't have TNT around it. An extra fact involving the Barrel Blast ability, is that when the game came out, Barrel Blast only had a damage reduction of 25%, this was later changed in January 2016 to a whopping 75%. I think that Barrel Blast really needed this buff, as without it, Captain Deadbeard would die within seconds and most definitely not be able to get near plants before being taken out. Did you know that Luti Booty Barrel Blast is a complete downgrade to the plain old Barrel Blast? Well, this is because the Luti Booty Barrel Blast only has 4 times damage reduction, whereas the normal ability has 5.32 times damage reduction. I will show you both of the barrel abilities versus 10 shots of pea shooter just so you can see for yourself. As you could see, the Luti Booty Barrel was left with only 37 health, but the normal Barrel Blast was left with 57 health which makes Barrel Blast the clear winner. I think that 500,000 coins just for a downgrade is very very stupid, as PopCap should have just made the ability the exact same as the original or even better, not worse.
A bonus fact utilizing the Luti Booty Barrel ability, is that if you equip the Barrel Balance Dance and equip the Luti Booty Barrel, then if you do the Barrel Balance Dance the Luti Booty Barrel will appear, rather than the original one. This also works in the customization booth. I find this really cool, as it's such a small but neat thing that the game developers added. A peculiar fact for Parrot Pal, is that when the player uses it, you can see that the Captain Deadbeard pulls out a treasure map. This isn't the strange thing though, the odd thing, is that if you go really close to the Deadbeard you can barely see that there is a shiny floating object. I have no idea as to what this is, so please, anyone, tell me what you think this could be. I personally think that it is a piece of gold, but isn't obviously meant to be there. One unusual fact for future Parrot Pal, is that for some weird reason, the drone automatically zooms out after a few seconds of you using it. Take a look, and see if you can spot it for yourself. I have absolutely no idea why this happens, maybe one of you guys can explain this to me in the comments down below. Take a look at future Parrot Pal's explosion, notice anything? Well, if you take a closer look, you can see that it forms an X. This is most likely a reference to X marks the spot since Captain Deadbeard is a pirate. This however does not form when using the normal parrot drone. An unusual fact about Cannon Rodeo, is that if you jump and use the Cannon Rodeo ability, then this purple light will occur. This actually happens because when you jump and use the cannon, the game breaks your cannon and then gives you another cannon for some strange reason. By the way, the purple light appears when your cannon breaks, if you didn't know, so that's where the purple light actually comes from. Although Zombie Stink Cloud's icon for the ability, shows it to come from a whole canister, you can actually see that it comes from just a plain old can that has a picture on it. PVZGW2 probably just wanted to make the ability look better than it actually is. One cool fact revolving around the Super Stink Cloud ability, is that if you use it and then go stand in it, Hero AIs can't see you once you are inside. As you can see, once the cloud goes away, all of the plants start to shoot me. By the way, potted plants can see you whether you are in the cloud or not. This works also with the Zombie Stink Cloud ability, but it's very scuffed and trash with it. Even though Rocket Jump makes the player jump significantly higher than Rocket Leap, Rocket Jump's picture seems to have a much smaller blast than Rocket Leap, despite Rocket Jump, jumping higher than it. A bonus fact for Rocket Jump, is that in its description, it says that one of Foot Soldier's things on his bucket list, was actually to get to places that other characters can't. I guess Super Brains is his biggest role model. A fact for Rocket Leap, is that it actually reaches the same height as Barrel Blast when it explodes. This is very useless, I know, but trust me, I tried looking for better facts. One abnormal fact about ZPG, is that for some reason, its damage varies despite you hitting the enemy straight to the body. Take a look for yourself, and see the different amounts of damage that I did each time. As you could see, the damage of the ZPG changed with every hit, from damage from 218 to 300. 
This is very strange to me, so can someone please tell me why this happens, in the comments. A bonus fact for ZPG, is that it is actually the most damaging thing out of any ability or weapon per shot, on zombies. I know some of you guys are going to say Big Bolt Blaster, but I said, per shot. One interesting fact based on Sonic Grenade, is that did you know that it lasts longer on chompers? This is only the case when the chompers are hit whilst they are burrowed. As you can see, the chomper has the stun effect for slightly longer than the weed. The difference is only about 0.5 or 1 second but it still makes a difference. A bonus fact for Sonic Grenade, is that in its picture, you can see that there seems to be a zombie with a glove holding the siren. This is peculiar, as Engineer is the only zombie that can use the loudspeaker but he doesn't ever wear any gloves in game. Despite this, if you look closely at his wrists, you can see that he has glove marks. This suggests that he was the one who was wearing the gloves, but later took them off. This explanation makes the most sense, as Engineer is a builder, so I think that before he was a zombie, he used to wear gloves at work, but removed them when he was turned into a zombie as he no longer needed them. A fascinating fact revolving around proximity sonic grenade, is that you can actually stack them on top of each other. Performing this is pretty simple, all you have to do, is place a mine down and then stand on the top of it, after that, you have to place another mine down and repeat the process. This is also possible whilst using potato nugget mine, I showed it in one of my recent videos, so go check them out if you haven't already. If a plant stumbles into the stacked mines, well, nothing much will happen, all of the mines will just go off. An extra fact involving the proximity sonic mine ability, is that did you know that it can range from two different colors. These colors are blue and black. I'm not quite sure as to why PopCap thought that the ability needed two colors, but there's a fact for you guys. A cool fact regarding the Big Bolt Blaster ability, is that if you look up whilst using it, you are mostly safe from any projectiles hitting you, as long as they are coming from the front. This is because the Big Bolt Blaster itself protects the engineer from getting hit. However, you are not fully safe from being hit from the sides or with Shuck Shot, Chili Bean Bomb, and for some weird reason, Citron's primary weapon, although it does a minute damage, of only one. An additional fact about Big Bolt Blaster, is that if you repeatedly spam the ability, on PS it's triangle, then Big Bolt Blaster will start glitching out. This probably happens, because it takes long for the ability's animation to finish, so you cancelling the ability before its animation even finishes, most likely is the reason as to why it glitches out. One fact for Jackhammer, is that if you do the Jackhammer strum gesture, the engineer will briefly pull out his Jackhammer and play it like a guitar. Fascinatingly, if you equip the Turbo Jackhammer ability, then the engineer will actually change the Jackhammer that he pulls out. This is so cool to me, and I believe that I was the first ever person to find this out. Another fact referring to the jackhammer ability, is that it is actually more useful than you might think. Its uses, are destroying destructible props such as tall nuts, within seconds. Destroying Citron's shield with ease. And cancelling pea shooter's gatling mode. I know that you guys probably don't think that any of this is actually useful, but I guess it's agree to disagree. Oh, and I bet that you didn't know that Jackhammer can actually destroy drones. Anyways, moving on to the next fact. One completely useless fact about Turbo Jackhammer, is that it actually makes the player jump slightly lower than someone using the normal Jackhammer ability. This is because Turbo Jackhammer has a jump multiplier of 1.3, whereas Jackhammer has a jump multiplier of 1.4. 
not much of a difference, I know. A cool fact about Heel Beam of Science, is that it actually cancels your reload. Doing this is pretty simple, all that is needed to do, is reload and keep using the Heel Beam of Science before the reload finishes, this makes the scientist repeat the animation. When you perform this, it looks pretty goofy and funny. This also works when using any other scientist. Another fact for Heel Beam of Science, is that it surprisingly has the longest description out of every ability in PVZGW2, with 6 lines. This is shocking to me, as I don't know how PopCap have so much to say, about such a bland ability that is a complete remake of the already existing ability, Heel Beam. One fact about Zombie Heel Station, is that despite its abilities picture, showing that the Heel Station has a big plus on it, when using the ability in-game, you can clearly see that there isn't actually any plus on it at all. I'm not quite sure if PopCap did this to make the ability look better, or just forgot to put the plus on it. This is also the same for Armored Heel Station. An extra fact referencing to the Zombie Heel Station, is that did you know that you can use it to glitch through a certain wall? This is in Imp's Quest Place, and all you have to do, is place the Heel Station as close to you as you can, and then you have to warp through the wall. This is a pretty cool glitch, but enough of that, on to the next fact. One fact based on Armored Heel Station, is that although it is bigger and looks like more heels come out of it, the normal heel station heals faster than it. Look how fast the scientist on the right heals compared to the one on the left. I don't know why Garden Warfare's game developers made Armored Heel Station visibly produce more heals, despite it actually healing slower than the normal ability, but there's a fact for you guys. Whenever Scientist uses his warp ability, you can see that he briefly pulls out a device with two buttons. This is how he is able to warp, see if you can spot it for yourself. Furthermore, in one of Scientist's idle animations, Scientist actually pulls this device out and plays with it. This is very cool to me, and it took me so long to find this out. An additional fact involving the warp ability, is that if you enter any cannon and use the warp, then this weird thing will happen. This probably happens because the game tries to warp you somewhere but you're in a cannon, so therefore it glitches out. A heartbreaking fact about energy warp, is that it unfortunately cancels computer scientists' legendary mode. I think that this is only fair, as for the cost of you surviving you lose your legendary mode. So for all you computer scientist mains, stay far far away from this horrifying ability. A bonus fact for Energy Warp, is that it has most likely inspired the out of fight ability in battle for Neighborville. You can tell, because they both make the player who is using it, invincible for a short period of time. The only difference that I could really find between the two, was that the energy warp is purple compared to the out of fight ability, which is blue. One fact about Imp Punt, is that did you know that it was originally from PVZ2? When looking at Imp Punt in PVZ GW2, you can see that All Star kicks the Imp which is how it travels. Also take a look at the imp's clothes and remember it. Okay, now focus on the top of the screen. As you can see, the all-star kicks the imp forward to get past some of the defense and the imp has the same design as the one in PVZ GW2. This just confirms that this is where most of the inspiration of the ability came from. A bonus fact for Imp Punt, is that it has the shortest description tying with the Bling Gatling ability.
This is definitely useless, but there you go. One fact for Long Bomb, is that you can surprisingly fly on the top of it. Take a look. This is so cool to me, but unfortunately I can't pull it off in-game. I really want to learn how to do this, but oh well. One fact involving the sprint tackle ability, is that you can use it to glitch out of the map. There are many tutorials on how to do this, mostly for the money glitch, so I won't dive that deep into this. But anyways, I like going out of the map and just exploring in my free time. An extra fact utilizing Sprint Tackle, is that if you enter any cannon and use the Sprint Tackle ability at the same time, then this weird thing will occur. For some reason, the All-Star will star way lower than he normally does when exiting the cannon. PVZ GW2 is such a wacky game. An interesting fact based on Ultra Tackle, is that when the ability is used, you can hear the all-star say, brains. Listen closely. I'm not sure if you guys heard that, as most of the sound is covered up by the actual ability itself. But similarly the gargantuer also says brains in the same tone. Guys, I'm really sorry if you couldn't hear that. I guess you will just have to go in game and try it for yourself. On to the next fact. One very specific fact about Shield Dummy, is that if you go to the promotion area, go in this spot and spam the Shield Dummy ability, then you will get squished and therefore travel up. I was bored in the backyard and was doing some random stuff, so this is how I found this out. As you can see, this doesn't work in any other corner. Another fact for Shield Dummy is that if you want to find something fun to do, you can go into any private map and put on low gravity. After this, you can place a Shield Dummy down like me, and jump on top of it, and repeat the process. It takes long for the Shield Dummies to recharge so I suggest having YouTube or anything open while doing this. A peculiar fact for Shield Decoy, is that on the design of it, you can see that it shows All Star in the middle of throwing an impunt. This is odd, as All Star never throws an impunt in any of the PVZ games. Maybe PopCap were planning on adding a new impunt ability, we never know. One other fact revolving around the Shield Decoy ability, is that when you stack them on each other, they go in random directions and look quite goofy. Not that much of a fact, but there you go. One intriguing fact about Damage Buff Booster Beam, is that did you know that you can use both of Hover Goat's other abilities while using it? Well, this is a neat feature I think, and it helps Hover Goat to become that support character that PopCap wanted him to be. An extra fact about Damage Buff Booster Beam, is that it actually gives a 30% damage boost to whoever you use it on. So, using it on bosses or a Toxic Brains in Toxic Overload would be very overpowered. Although, good luck keeping up with the Toxic Brains. Really a tip more than a fact for Mega Awesome Laser is that you should stand still whilst using it. This is because moving around drains energy from the ability meaning you will have less time to use it. You may be asking, how can I stand still without dying or getting hit? Well all you have to do, is get the right hand peek, where you will be able to hit the opponent but they won't be able to hit you. One fact for Tubular Turbo, is that did you know that it has the same effects as a flag zombie being next to you? 
If you didn't know, if you stand next to a flag zombie in PvZ GW2, then you will get a slight speed increase. Popcap maybe thought that turning this idea into an ability would be a good idea, and that's probably the story of how Tubular Turbo was made. One fact centered around the multi-rocket ability, is that each rocket takes 0.8 seconds to fire. This is probably the most useless fact in the video, but you guys try and find a better fact. Trust me, it's harder than it may seem. Moving on to the mech abilities, one fact about Drake Call, is that did you know that it actually has 4 usable jumps at one time? Well, each of these four jumps are very small but are noticeable. I just spammed jump whilst using the Lil Drake mech and realized that it actually had four jumps. These jumps are way better to use on maps with low gravity such as Lunar Landing, as each of the jumps would have an increase of height. One more fact for Drake Mech, well this fact applies to all of the mechs, is that it has a different flying animation when it exits a cannon. Since all of the mechs have a different flying animation, I might make a video on it soon. One intriguing fact for Pylon Mech, is that it was most likely inspired by Robocone Zombie from Plants vs. Zombies 2. This is because they have a very similar design with the only difference really being that Robocone Zombie has legs, whereas Pylon Mech has a wheel that it is able to ride around on instead. A bonus fact featuring the Pylon Mech ability, is that were you aware that it is the only mech that manually picks the imp up off of the ground. All of the other mechs just kind of land on top of the imp, but I am glad that they at least made one mech differ from the rest. A fact revolving around the Pylon Mine ability, is that, it may be obvious, but did you know that it is the only equivalent ability to Potato Mine in the game, as it does 175 damage, which is the exact same as the Potato Mine, and that's just it. It literally is just a reskin of Potato Mine, and I never expected it to be on a mech. My question is, why didn't PopCap just make the ability for Cactus's counterpart, Captain Deadbeard? A peculiar fact for Drag Race, is that if you actually eliminate a plant with this ability, then it will strangely say that you killed them with Sprint Tackle in the chat. Sprint Tackle is actually one of All Star's abilities so I'm not sure why the game developers put this in the game. Maybe it was just a placeholder but they forgot to remove it, because the ability is just a dash which is very similar to Sprint Tackle. Another fact for Drag Race, is that if you use the ability and let go of the movement button, then press jump like I do in the clip, then you will travel way more distance if you were to use the ability normally. It may not be as good as Super Brain's heroic kick ability, but there you guys go. A compelling fact about the Bling Pylon Mech ability, is that it is surprisingly different from its normal counterpart. Besides from its design there is a small difference, being that the Bling Pylon Mech unexpectedly does 2 more damage per hit than the normal Pylon Mech. I found this out quite a while ago, and I wanted to share this with you guys. An extra fact based on really both of the mechs, is that if you use your mech and it runs out, rather than having to wait the full time, 2 minutes and 30 seconds, you can just respawn and switch to the other mech that you was not already using. When doing this, the mech cooldown will be halved, and you will only have to wait for 1 minute and 15 seconds. Keep in mind though, that if you just respawn then it will not work, you will need both of the mechs.
A cool fact for the shrimp mech, is that when you eject from it, the animation of the mech looks like a fish out of water. This makes sense, because shrimps are amphibians just like fish, so it would make sense that it would be bobbing around whilst struggling to breathe. Nice one popcap. One additional fact on the shrimp mech ability, is that it makes a gurgling sound whilst you move around with it. Listen closely. I have no idea as to why the mech makes this noise. Maybe it has something to do with shrimp, it would be greatly appreciated if one of you guys could let me know in the comments. Anyways, moving on to the next fact. A fascinating fact for Water Cyclone, is that you can amazingly cancel Pea Shooter's Pea Gatling ability, and Sunflower's Sunbeam ability by using it. This is especially helpful for mechs, as big damage abilities such as Gatling P are what kills mechs most of the time. However, Water Cyclone is unable to unburrow chompers. An extraordinary fact about Shrimp Jump, is that if you hold the jump button whilst using it, then you will go way higher and travel further. This helps the mech to be more versatile and get to places that it couldn't before. Furthermore, if you spam jump after using the shrimp jump ability and let go of the movement button, then you will travel very far. This alone probably makes the shrimp mech the fastest mech or character in the game. One fact covering the party mech ability, is that did you know that you can reach the party mode whilst using it? In order to do so, you need to get 4 normal kills as imp, then you need to switch to the mech and get a shared vanquish. I am not sure why you need the shared vanquish, but yeah. When you get the party mode on the mech, you will heal up to half health if you were not already. You will gain a speed boost, and deal more damage. As you can see, you will not obtain party mode if you just get a normal vanquish for some weird reason. A fact for Scallywag Mech, is that it is most likely based off of Captain Deadbeard. This is because the mech is able to switch its firing to close range and long range, just like Captain Deadbeard. Also the mech's emote is almost identical to the Captain Deadbeard celebration emote, further backing this idea up. A bonus fact for the Scallywag mech, is that, this is just my opinion, it was inspired by the Plank Walker from Plants vs Zombies 2. This is because they have pretty much all the same features except from the legs and big eye on the Plank Walker's face. Do you guys agree? Also, if you was wondering, you cannot reach Yoho mode, the legendary mode for Scallywag Imp, whilst in the Scallywag mech, even if you get a shared vanquish. One fact for Krusty Gigabomb, is that it actually comes from Scallywag Mech's right arm, out of a cannon. This makes no sense, as there are four mini cannons, so how do they shoot out a giant bomb if they are all separate cannons? Also, a quick fact, Krusty Gigabomb does a total of 225 damage if placed correctly. A fact about Peg Leg Kata, is that this ability is just a bigger and better version of Impkata. You can even tell by the name, it is just a remake, but made better. I like that the Scallywag mech spins around on its peg, hence the name, whilst using the ability. Imagine if the mech spun around on the floor instead. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I have nearly completed this amazing series and I'm glad you guys have made the journey with me. I just want to know what you guys would want me to upload after I do finish the series. 
With all that said, like, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day. Peace.